The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Monday, January 29th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. Now, today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan, and once again, it's another video segment, the Sunday Message Word Study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? It is Monday. Another week has begun. And yes, I am grateful and thankful. How was your weekend, everyone? Uh, Just don't forget... Q&A Thursday is coming up once again. Get those questions ready. Send them to me whenever you can. Looking forward to these two. If you haven't yet, leave a like and comment to build our community. Just super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. This week's Sunday message title, to be thankful, God takes action with the one who knows. Yes. Great Sunday message. We'll get into that in the second segment. And of course, we have 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan. And uh, yeah, he's we've been talking. He's in Korea, kind of in the same time zone as where I am right now. Hopefully, he'll have some time to come visit Malaysia. But uh, he's having a great time. He did send another video segment. So um, yeah, you guys are going to see that last segment. It's going to be uh, a video. You're going to see who Eddie Kwan is. And yes, they are inspiring me. I will get to uh, the video segments for me once again also. All right. So uh, what's happening these days? Oh, so a couple things happening. Um, someone had a someone had a dream about me, and they called me about this, which is kind of cool. Well, they, they 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 told me about their dream, right? So the dream is inside their dream. It was in Vancouver, Canada, so it's my hometown, and they said that uh, I was preaching in their dream, right? So I was lecturing in downtown Vancouver. They said long lineups of people, long lineups of people getting ready to lecture. It was me and some me and another lecturer. And basically, Bible studies teaching three different lessons every 20 minutes. Well, three different lessons in in an hour, which means 20 minutes per lecture. And they're just groups just coming in over and over and over again. And uh, just group by group keeps coming in and I'm preaching. So I was really, really inspired by that. So I am grateful and thankful when I hear those types of things. I don't know if it's literally about me. But even for me, one of the things that kind of goes through my head is if... 20 minute lectures and people are coming in one by one and there's lineups of people watching it. It actually makes me think about the internet. It really does. It makes me think about the internet, the videos up, it'll be 20 minute videos and people are just watching it over and over and over again. So that kind of uh, gives me the inspiration and the thoughts I need, like, oh, maybe I should be doing these 20 minute lectures, something along this line. But yeah, those are some of the things that came. uh, That's one of the cool dreams that someone had about me. So I'm hoping to God it is me. It's not going to be me symbolizing someone else, but I hope it's me. So, God, if you're, I, I hope you'll uh, answer that uh, dream for me, and maybe that will be me preaching like that. Uh, oh, <clears throat> I watched a movie on the weekend, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, those of you who like John Wick, there is a new movie, and I'm going to be very honest with you guys, the story is not as good as John Wick, however... This movie is called The Beekeeper. It is wild. Like, um, the thing that makes it, for me, that made it a little bit more exciting than John Wick is like, it's just as much violence. There's so much killing in it, right? But there's no, like, long dialogue in the middle. It's straight up scene after scene after scene. It is crazy, right? It's, it's Jason Statham. If you guys watch this, The Transporter um, or like, uh, what's, that, what's that movie called? The Fast and Furious with Shaw and Hobbs. He's Shaw, right? And it's crazy. I watched it nonstop action. You'll never get bored. Hour and 45 minutes. Um, it's like John Wick, but it's got no like dead dialogue in the middle like you know john wick has at one point is kind of building the story this one has no story to build you know what the premise is and it's straight up this man who's got these like the perfect set of skills one purpose and goal no stopping him beginning to the end it it was pretty it was pretty wild right so if uh if you guys really like john wick you've got to watch the beekeeper right so i'm figuring this is more probably it's gonna appeal more to guys 
But I do think if 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 girls are out there, you like John Wick, you are gonna love this movie. Entire movie. It's a bit graphic. There's some scenes that are pretty gross. That you know, like I'm watching with my friend, and it's so gross. Like it's not gross, but it's like so graphic and violent at certain points. Like your my mouth was left open. I'm like oh. And I'm with my mouth open, I'm turning to my friend, and we're both like speechless. Cause it's it was like yeah, it was it was you know, it was stunningly graphic and super violent. Uh, and I would say it was a, just fun. Fun, exciting, another John Wick. I loved it. Guys, go watch the beekeeper. If you love John Wick, this is like um a more tame, not tame, sorry, because it's it's more, I think it's, well, I think it's going to maybe beat some records of how many people are going to be dying uh, compared to John Wick. Well, actually, John Wick kills more people because John Wick is more about guns and shoot, you know, shoot him in the head and it's over kind of thing. This one is like a lot of skill because it's Jason Statham, right? And he's a martial artist. So when you watch this, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that is so crazy. Yeah, so like I'm saying, everyone out there, if you do, uh, you've, you've, uh, if you like John Wick, you got to watch Watch the beekeeper i loved it i loved it exciting beginning to end just non is action-packed non-stop all right so that's kind of my uh recommendation for those who like john wick if you don't like john wick you're not gonna like this movie at all uh uh, lately, I've been uh, in discussions and going over some uh, tech stuff for my YouTube channel, the Espresso with Sky. We are going to be rebranding it, so I do, do need to get some more. Uh, like uh, I'm going to be redesigning the channel itself too, and um, we're gonna go live. We're gonna go live stream, guys. So it's gonna be something where I'm gonna go live, which means because I'm in Malaysia, it's most likely going to be morning time in in like America, and it's going to be the evening time in like asia so asia it's going to be morning no asia it's going to be evening and uh in america it's going to be the morning right but of course even though it's going to be a live stream it's still going to be you know the the video will still be posted up anyway so i hope you guys will really really enjoy that also but it it, it is it, we are going to do it live which is going to be kind of exciting for me too because there's no such thing as me like trying to make it perfect. It's just whatever comes out, comes out, and that's it. It's done, gotta think. I'll make a mistake. It's gonna be on there forever. A little bit scary, but something that I am looking forward to, too. Right? So, oh, and you know what? You guys know when you guys um, use OBS, there's like a Bible verse, uh, like you could buy a Bible verse program that you just like plug in uh like if i say matthew chapter 14 verse 25 you just put like mt 14 colon 25 and then it just pops up you guys does anyone know what that thing is called what that program is called i remember i used it when i was in new york it was such a lifesaver it really really was right so either way uh yeah so i'm probably gonna go live stream with that too so that's quite exciting for me also what's even more exciting is uh I got a real sponsorship uh, request right now. And it's not only fans. It's not uh, weed or anything like that. It's actually a new microphone company that wants to, that's like sending out podcast sets to new podcasts. And um, they're, 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 I'm working with them right now to see if um, they will send me a new mic. Right? They're going to send me a whole podcast system, and I hope it's something that really, really works out. But uh, I am working on a sponsorship for equipment for a podcast microphone set, so hopefully that works out. If you guys can pray for me, that would be wonderful and great. Uh, also, uh, I am just so grateful and thankful, guys. Um, a lot of you, it's almost the end of January. That's when we're doing the big push for Patreon and uh, just kind of seeing uh, who can support for this year of 2024. Yes, 2023 is done. It's all done, all the, the craziness, the pandemic's over, life is coming back to normal, uh, and if you do find this, uh, if you find the Morningstar Drive as something that is part of your day, and you do want to support us financially, go ahead to Patreon, click on it, we've had a, a lot of new people sign up for January, and very, very grateful and thank for all of you that are just um, uh, doing that one too like uh, supporting financially. Yes, if you can't do it, I understand. And please, if anything, please pray so that we can be sustainable and even more than more than sustainable that we can make this into something so much bigger, like an actual like um, entertainment channel for members. And I think that would be something that would be super awesome also. Either way. All right, so, oh, there's something that I want to play for you guys. Because, you know, this year, Sunseam talks a lot about testifying. I want to play some... 
like stuff I see on the internet, it's awesome. And these are people that are testifying for what is happening like in their like it's crazy. So there's these two guys I really want to talk about, okay? So the first one, his name is Jim Harbaugh. He used to be a pro a uh, pro football player who's a quarterback. And then he became, like, he went to head coaching. He's considered one of the, you know, he's a really, really good coach. But uh, this year, uh, his football team won the national championship for college football. And that's like, it's a huge thing. And uh, there was this interview going on with him. And he was there for the March for Life. So he's like anti-abortion. And he, you know, he believes that all life is valuable, right? So, and he's very, very Christian. I didn't know how Christian he was, but I was listening to his interview. And in the interview, this is how crazy it is, okay? So he is the, the college football coach, and he testifies that during this one year of football, 70 people on his team got baptized just this year. So think about this. On a football team, there's like uh, less than 100 players, it's probably like 80 to 90 players. He said 70 of their players were baptized this year and he was just uh, like testifying about this saying that you know God is a big part of my life and you know I put God into my program right and he says yeah and there's like the people who are really really spiritual and faithful too you know they, they connect with him also but because of you know uh, because of their faith 70 people were baptized, came to Christ from his football team in a single year. Like that's amazing impact. So when I listened to that, it was on, it was on, it was on, uh, it was on YouTube. I was like, wow, that's incredible. And then he just talks about his faith for God, that God is the center of his life, that his family was all centered around God. So when I heard that, I was like, that is incredible. And then there's another guy, uh, Rookie, first-year player in the NFL. His name is C.J. Stroud, quarterback for uh, the Houston Texans. Young kid, like 22, 23 years old. And uh, maybe he's 21. 21 or 22 years old. <sighs> listen, C.J. Stroud, listen to all his post-interviews. All of them. All of them. And guess what? Every single interview starts with, First and foremost, foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, you've been with me all the way, every single time. And it's so crazy because there's a big scandal that happened because at the end of a game, once again, he talks about Jesus and how much he's thankful to Jesus. And then he thanks his teammates. And I think it was like MSNBC. Uh, when they replayed it, they cut out the section where he gives glory to Jesus and God. They cut it out. So when you watch it on YouTube, you won't even hear about it because they cut it out. So that became a huge scandal scandal thing, right? But think about it. This kid, young kid, uh, he, and um, they just had a playoff game. They lost. And everything, like they're asking him, hey, hey, um, how are you feeling? How are you getting through this? And he's like, I've been through this before. God puts me to, you know, oh, what? he says something really profound. He's like, you know, it doesn't matter if I win or lose, right? What, and he's like, it doesn't matter. Like God puts me, God doesn't care about the wins or losses. God just loves me. Can you, like, isn't that incredible what he said? God doesn't care about the wins or losses. It's not about whether I win or lose. I'm still loved. This is on TV that he's saying this, right? He's the quarterback, the most, like, he's like the most famous person on his team. And all he does is praise God on tv and he says this is how i was raised when i was born until now i've lived in uh, i've gone to church all my life this is what it is um oh, i think there's one other player that i was listening to uh he was a running back i think i forget what his name was but he just said i feel um oh no it was a guy named tua tagovailoa he's also a quarterback young guy too he's probably like 24 25 years old and he says he feels sad because he wished he could go to church, but all the games are on Sunday. And he says, you know, it's, it's been tough for me for these last couple of years because I have to watch my services online. But he's saying that in front of everyone. Same thing, straight up. He's like, yeah, this is all about God. My life has been centered around God. This is all about God. So 
when Sunstein's talking about people testifying, these these famous people that have more to lose than we do, that even like the the media are trying to like uh, edit out their their thanksgiving to Jesus and God, but these people straight up testifying they have no qualms whatsoever they don't care like even this one person's question after he says all praise to god is like well okay we know your faith but what about your friend like uh what did you do he's like no no it's all god it's all god kind of thing so uh it, it's really refreshing to see people uh that are not separating their their faith from their life right so oh this is my work life and this is uh what i do with my friend's life and then this is my church life and I was really, really inspired uh, by the, the, these interviews. So go take a look at Tua Tagovailoa. I know his name is going to be very, very difficult. But if you just put Tua, T-U-A, quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, you'll hear him talking about God and Jesus. C.J. Stroud, rookie, talking about God and Jesus. Jim Harbaugh, talking about God and Jesus. There's a, there's a podcast I listen to. His name is PBD. Patrick Bet David. Great. Uh, he's He's got so many testimonies about God, but one of them I was so moved by. Uh, in an interview, someone asked him, if you lost everything today, but you had the favor of God, would it matter? And Patrick Bed David began to cry. And he says, it doesn't matter what I lost. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter. And he's crying. He says, God has done so much for me that if I lost everything but I have his favor, that's all that matters. And he was crying. There's like silence because he's crying. They're getting him a tissue because he's so in love with God, so thankful to God. And for me too, I was like, that is inspiring. That's, that's, that's more than just saying that I'm a believer. That is more. Like, he is willing to profess, confess, tell everyone, yeah, everything is because of God. And these people are all super famous, super successful. So when I saw that, I was just like, wow, like, this is the light. This is the place where we have to get providence at. Like, that's the place we need to get ourselves at is being, being with God in everything we do giving glory to God, giving thanks to God, letting people know that, no, no, this is not me. Everything that I have right now is because of God. There's no one else kind of thing, right? So I was just super inspired by that. So um, yeah, if you guys ever get a chance, listen to those interviews where these people talk about God, even PBD, Patrick Bet David crying because he wouldn't care. He, this guy's worth a hundred, no, $200 million. And he doesn't care if he loses everything as long as he has God's favor. And you know, he was serious. Here's a man crying on on like TV because he's so thankful to God. So for me, crazy inspiration. I loved it. And I was like, wow, like this is where we should be. I'm going to talk a little bit about this a little bit later too. But uh, yeah, because I, I had a, a couple discussions uh, over the weekend. Great discussions. Some things that, uh, you know, some things I'm still stewing over and thinking in my head and digesting. But there's one comment I heard from a good friend of mine, right? And it's about evangelism. And we're, you know, we're talking about like, uh, you know, what the, the conversation last week is a tough conversation, right? We talked about marriage. Uh, it is a tough conversation. It really, really is, right? And it's something that's not talked enough and we don't talk enough about it, then it's held in and people are going to have questions that people are going to struggle over things they shouldn't be struggling over if we just have conversation, right? So even for me, I am down for more conversation all the time, right? And, uh, the big, you know, like the thing I was, I was bringing up is like, yeah, like I was thinking about, you know, long-term solution is like, say, evangelizing guys. Short-term is, uh, short-term is, you know, something else. I would say there's, there's a great short-term ways to do these things too. Actually, let me talk about it right now. This might be controversial to some of you guys out there. I don't think it's controversial at all. I think it's something that people should be talking about uh, because of the current situation. That's just, this is what I truly, truly feel right long-term solution like but here's but here's the interesting part let, uh, let me get into like the conversation i had first when i brought up the long-term and short-term conversation last week uh this good friend of mine's like going well you know what you know what you know we we talk about um this solution is is not really the main issue that we need to deal with right this is just what you'd call um what do you call it it's a symptom of what the real problem is, which which totally makes sense to me, 
right? And then now what we're trying to do is to change the way we evangelize. So we're like, come on, guys, it's all evangelized guys. But then he said something really profound to me. He's like, I don't care whether I evangelize girls or guys. What matters to me, is there someone out there seeking God? And that for me was inspiring. It really was. Right? I was like, yeah, that's so true. Evangelism is not about, oh, I'm not going to choose you because you're not, you know, you're not a guy, right? Even though we're desperate for guys. But the big, big thing we're thinking about now is, is it really just about God? No, when we go to evangelize, we're trying to find the chosen people. We're trying to find the people who are ready to come. We're, we're trying to find the people seeking God. We're not here to force in so many guys. Because the one thing, another thing he said to me was something that I never thought about, but I think we do have to think about it. And the, and the thing, the statement made was, how do you know that this is not God that is putting us through these dry times? That's a profound statement that I've never thought about. I'm just thinking about, oh, we got to solve the problem. Right? How are we going to solve this problem? How are we going to solve this problem? But the thing that never dawned on me was, how do you know that this is not God that is putting us through these dry times, right? And in my head, I'm like, true, but what, yeah, what if we're getting judged? I've never thought about that. Are we getting judged? You guys ever thought about that? Like we're going through the time, the path of the cross, and how many times have we heard, like even through the, remember, remember the, the 10 years, when that was happening, Sun Sim is like, we are the reason that this happens. Because if the disciples properly testified, if they properly testified and showed the world who, what this history was, this wouldn't have happened, right? Like, we've heard it. Which means if we didn't do it, is this part of, it? could this be part of some type of judgment? And I, I'm not saying it is, guys. So I'm not saying, oh, this is. But I've never thought about it that way. And it's not going to stop me from doing it. It's not going to stop me from evangelizing. It's not going to stop me from, you know, uh, from, from evangelizing or pursuing life. But I've never thought about that. How do you know it's not God? Where like, you know, like I'm, remember this coming off the top of my head right now is like, we are not bringing lives, so we're not given life. Given life is like the, you know, we talk about the physical purpose of creation and we're not having, we're not going to have any, we're not going to have any babies because that's kind of the dry times we're going through because we are so dry in evangelism. We're not testifying. We're not the ones doing things properly. Like I, I, the, all those thoughts came to my head like, wow, I never thought about that. But we hear about it all the time about God's judgment. We hear about these things. And like I said, once again, I repeat, I'm not saying we're in judgment. I'm saying I've never thought about it and it could be true. It could be true. And that made me think really, really deeply about it. And I think it's something that we have to think about also. It's not going to stop me from doing what I do. But man, if, that, if it is God bringing in these dry times because of the situation, the circumstance, it could be our fault. It could be the time period's fault. Whatever it is. That's heavy. That's really heavy. Right? Because Sun Sim even said, look at what's happening in the world. Look at what's happening in the world. People are turning away from God. There are wars, famines, earthquakes, right? There's all these things that said were going to happen are happening. And what's even more crazier is like what's happening in the world with the birth rates. Like even that is a, is a heavy thing. We're dealing with all these things at the exact same time. Is it coincidence? Is it just something that's happening only in Providence? And the answer is absolutely not. It's happening everywhere. It's happening in the world. It's not just Providence. The ratio of guys to girls or like not having uh, more children is it's in the world, not just here, right? We're not just having spiritual earthquakes, the shaking of faith in 2023. They're happening outside in the physical world. The wars. Think about this. Is the war only happening between Russia and Ukraine? Is it only happening between uh, Taiwan and China? Is it only happening between them? Or do we have it even within Providence? 
It makes me think even more deeply of the role that we play in the world, how well we really, really have to do. Everything that's happening outside is, or is happening inside of Providence too, which makes me think more deeply. How do you know it's not God that is putting us through these dry times? And when I heard that, I'm like, wow. <sighs> like, it was just, it was like a door was opened to my mind because I never thought about it. I just never thought about it in that way. And I was like, wow, I got to think about that. So that was something that was really like mind blowing for me and uh, something that I really thought about also. Second thing I thought was very, very interesting too, though. Uh, I had another conversation with another friend of mine and we, you know, we, we, you know, we talk about leadership a lot and we're talking about a real situation that's happening. Like just, it's a real situation in, uh, in like in church, in a country, right? And we're kind of talking how leadership is kind of in a stalemate, right? So what do, what do we mean by stalemate? Stalemate means that it's not hot or cold. It's just kind of staying alive, like leadership itself. It's in a stalemate, right? And we talked about the current situation that we were looking at. And um, it's like, we see that many times people are put into a leadership position, but, yet, but, but these people are not actively trying to do or be a better leader. Like every situation is handled the same. The same way it's always been handled. Super cautious, super safe. And for me, I call this like defensive leadership. There's nothing moving forward. We're just waiting to be hit. And then we're ching, 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 ching. Like, you know, we're like defending ourselves from all the things that are coming towards us. And it almost feels like with the current leadership that I see in a lot of places is, is just hoping that nothing bad happens. But put it this way, if you have a thousand arrows shot at you and no matter how fast you are, and you're like, ching, 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 and you're like, block it. I'm not being racist, guys. I'm not saying ching, 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 like, you know, racist thing. <laughs> right? Guys, I'm Asian. You'll know I'm Asian, right? So it's like, ching, 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 It's like, you know, you can block as many arrows, but guess what? One or two arrows are going to get through if you're just defensive. And what ends up happening is, the worst thing possible, which is what? Stale leadership where everyone just tries to make sure nothing bad happens. There's no growth. And everything's always done in the safest way possible. No no risk, but not just risk, calculated risks. Because there's risks you shouldn't do, but there's also calculated risks that you calculate and you know that this risk is better. It's just everyone waiting to make sure that nothing bad happens. And like I said, when those few arrows get through and something bad eventually happens, it just reinforces their thoughts like, see, something bad happened, so we have to be more safer. And for me, I'm just like, it's never going to grow. It's never going to grow. It's never going to get better. It's always going to be at the same place. Like, let me tell you what a calculator risk that I take on, on MSD. And you guys know this, right? I am transparent. I am super transparent on MSD because I know that it's not transparent anywhere else in the world that I have been to, that I've seen with my own eyes or heard with my own ears. I think the only place that I've really heard that is quite transparent is probably Australia. I think they're the ones that are probably ahead of all the other countries. Like think about what happened in 2023. When do people start talking about it? It's not transparent. Leadership says nothing and no, people have to find it on their own. Or from, and what I heard at the end of 2023, people are like, without your podcast, we would never know what's going on. And what happens is since leadership doesn't talk about it, the people are finding it on their own. People, their friends, their family is telling them and they're left to defend themselves, their own faith in their lives and no one is there to support them. And what about the lives that they're that you're taking care of? The lives that you're taking care of are seeing all these things. And then what happens? Since you haven't heard anything from leadership, you don't know what to say to these people except don't ever watch that. Someone finds out we know nothing about it. So we can't even properly take care of these people. So here's what's the calculator risk. The calculator risk is I would rather be transparent and say everything about it. Say everything. The risk is some people will be affected 
And my answer, my calculator risk is these people are going to be affected regardless. There's going to be that 20% in the church will be always affected by everything. Some people are going to be affected. Yeah, that's a calculator risk. Some people can be influenced by it. That's a calculator risk. Why? Because a calculator risk also involves what's the alternative, right? So instead of having all, everything secret, everyone talking behind the scenes, what happens if everyone talks behind the scenes? The leaders have zero clue who knows or who doesn't. The zero, there, no one's going to talk to them about it because it's not open. Everyone thinks it's secret. No one, the leaders have no idea what's happening in the background. But once you have all the information out, teach properly the context, situation. Let people understand clearly what is happening. Let them be able to take care of the people that saw these things, whatever it is. And you're going to have a stronger church because of it. Are people going to be affected? Absolutely. But for me, it's a calculated risk. I don't like the other side. It's calculated. It's thought out. We know the pros and cons. And guess what? Are some people going to be affected? Absolutely. Are some, some people may leave? It's possible. And I like the, the calculated risk of it being open and people coming to me and talking to me instead of having no idea. And then only finding out after the problem is fully developed and people have all left and people have been affected by it. Which one's better? Which one's a better risk to you? Being transparent, open, everyone knowing, right? Especially something that's that important to this history. Remember, guys, I was shocked. Go listen to my April, May, my April and May podcast and some people still don't know what's going on. April and May, March, April, May... Three months in, people still have no idea what's going on. That's crazy for me. Instead of everything happening behind the scenes, you have no idea what's going on. It's better to be open. Allow people to think about it, discuss it. Allow people to ask questions. Let them not feel like it's a taboo subject. And for me, it's a calculated risk. What I see as a pro is so far beyond what is a con. And what I, you know, we, we had this great conversation about leadership. And, you know, this is just something that we, we notice. Like, I, I was listening to this one person. Like, it's so sad to me that there's this one point. There's someone put in a leadership position. And someone goes in to support them. But their only rule, the, the thing that they're told to do is, oh, just help as much as you can on the, you know, around this person. Uh, just don't make this person upset. I'm like, what? That's the worst thing I've heard. This person's leading, just don't make them upset. They're young. They're this, this, and this. Just, just, just try to help them out as much as you can, but be, you know, be very quiet. I'm like, so you put a person in position where if they get upset, they basically shut down the entire system and no one can say anything, but just bear with that person until it settles? What is that? That makes no sense to me. I was just like, wow. I, I, I would never work in that situation. I, w- I would actually be the rebel pastor, go in and break it up and say, hey, it can't go like this. You will never grow. This will never get better. And it's like what I said before with these, uh, with Coach Jim Harbaugh, with uh, C.J. Stroud, Tua Tagovailoa, Patrick Bed David. They are in a platform and position to make a difference and tell people that God is king. He's number one above all things. And that's why they're successful. When are we going to start to grow? When are we going to have, you know, and here's the crazy part. When I say, when will we start to really grow? The first thing people are thinking is evangelism. I'm not even talking about evangelism. I'm talking about you as an individual to reach that point where everything, you are so thankful to God. God is the center, the core of your life that every time someone asks, you know it's about God. Without God, there's no way. It's all about God. You're not ashamed to pray in front of people. You're not ashamed to do this or that. Personally, this is just me. Until I see growth, growth right? Evangelism is not the number one thing on my mind. It's not. Because I truly feel that evangelism is a fruit of personal growth. It's a fruit of a church's growth. 
Evangelism is not the number one thing for me. If it was, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I'd be doing a podcast for newcomers, but I'm not. I'm doing it for us, for members. Evangelism to me means nothing if the internal condition is bad. Now, if the internal condition is growing and slowly improving, that's, you know, of course, when you evangelize, people are moving into this growing uh, community, right? But if, you're, if, if the internal is very toxic, you're bringing fresh new lives into a toxic system where people are not growing and we need to grow, right? What does it mean when I say, when will we really start to grow? It means the church itself. It means the, the departments, the leadership, the individuals. What I kind of see is, and I'm guilty of this myself, is come to church, receive the word, and then for the rest of the week, I'm expected to grow on my own. You guys ever feel that? I don't know if you guys feel that. And I think this is, this is the place, a podcast, I think this is something that we can do to help each other. So we're not on our own. We have a community here, even though we're all over the world, right? We have like, remember, like 13 to 15 countries that are listening to this podcast and we're like chiming in, we're discussing, we're having a great time, we're, we're trying to think, help each other grow even more. I, just, I, I, I don't think it's healthy that if we come to church once, maybe twice, and then we're expected to grow on our own. We all need help. We all need the people supporting us. Right? We, we can't, we're not here to feel alone or to be alone. We're growing together. Right? Like I said, I look at those celebrities, so in love with God, so stable, so strong, in front of a camera. They don't care what people think about them. Everything that I am is because of God, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. And I think uh, one thing that's going to help us in the future is going to be now that we're more in the open, in the past, the more hidden the life of providence is, the more we hide our faith and pretend to be like a person who's just part of this world, trying to avoid anyone noticing. And I think, you know, one, you know, one thing as we are coming out now, coming out of our shell, um, it's going to be something where it's going to change our psychology. And I think that's going to be really amazing to see all of us, you know, having that time of confessing our faith in public. Just, you know, I think that's going to be a great, uh, a great moment for us. And I think it's, we're moving towards that. Am I blaming anyone for this? And the answer is, no, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not blaming anyone for all this stuff. There's, we can't blame people for this. It's something that we have to do together as a whole. Even if one person says they see a problem, one person can't change it. It's something we got to do together. And I think, like I said, it's going to be about discussion. It's going to be about talking. It's going to be about figuring out how we can do this better. And I hope it's something that all of us too, uh, when we think about leadership, we're not here to criticize leadership because what if the leadership's not supported well enough, right? Like that's one thing I do think about is, yeah, sometimes leadership is not supported. So if leadership is not supported, leadership is not being helped to grow more in leadership, then how can you blame them in if that's just the system that they're in and they're just doing what they're supposed to be doing kind of thing, right? We got to change it from the inside out, right? And I, I hope that all of us, you know, we'll get ourselves to that position. We can start uh, with really, really good conversation, really good conversation and uh, discussion and actually real action plans. And I think I'm, I'm even hoping that if we can get, you know, if we have leaders that are listening to this podcast too, we got to get ourselves to that next level, the next stage, right? And that's something that I hope that we will get ourselves to understand uh, better too, right? So yeah, there's, there's, there was so much to talk about. I had probably three or no, two major conversations uh, about leadership, about situation, the church, providence, and they're not even complaints, this is people who truly, truly love Providence and we want to see it thrive and grow and be awesome. That's what we really, really want. That's it. That's what we want. So that's something that I look at and say, yeah, that's, that's something that has to happen. And it's going to happen. I, I, I really believe it too. Okay. So yeah. Wow, man, we've gone 40 minutes already. Good, good Lord. Uh, yeah, before we get into it, yeah, the second section is going to be a Sunday message word study. So before we get into that, uh, let's, for, wow, I can't believe it went 40 minutes, but let's move into the first, uh, the first break of the day. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. 2023, 
We've all come a long way. Many different stories, but we're all on the same journey. Many, many ups and downs, but we're all still around. Many, many, many lessons, but each one came with a blessing. Let's not forget for where we come from when we make this confession. Some people just want to watch the world burn. As for you and I, let's set ourselves on fire. Shine a light so bright that will make the people say, Burning life, burning life, uh huh. Look at the flames in my eyes, watch it burn, but don't stare too long, you might lose your sight. Some people gunning for a death, but they'll never see our demise. Burning life, burning life. Who's the one? I'm the one, he's the one, and you're the one, and we're the ones. We're the ones who keep the fire going till the day we die, till they see the light, make it bright, till we hear the people say, Born sinner, never could be ill. I know I'm back from the dead, yeah, the Lord is my healer. I took the red pill, that's why I call him teacher. When you learn about the spirit, oh, there ain't nothing real. The one you learn from determines your entire destiny Learn from the one who taught about eternity Cloud craving, paper chasing The joy is only temporary I don't wanna do the same thing So I hide to count the vanity I keep my eyes on the prize I'll never sell my soul to the devil in disguise With both hands on each side I'm holding on to dear life I keep my guard up, never back down When it goes down, I call on the Christ Spiritual battle, answer the call It's Call of Duty, modern warfare Put the armor of God The fighting Lucy with the rock I got atomic bombs Love the Lord your God And know your brothers Watch the demons fall Don't be deceived Know who the ups is Keep the unity and peace Go far way across this Came to preach the word of God Like I'm born in Tarsus Here to testify the things I've seen on road to Damascus He's the real deal, the real thing Be glad you heard the king's speech Blessed are those who reach the end And get to hear the Lord speak G.O.D.'s, P.O.C. We fulfilled every Everything, burning life, kerosene, burning life, legacy. You will never see me stop in the future. The life that fulfills God's will will continue. Everyone thinks I'm unfortunate because I go through suffering. But inside of me it's different. Because I walk the path of eternal life. Burning life, burning life, uh-huh. Look at the flames in my eyes, watch it burn, but don't stare too long, you might lose your sight. Some people gunning for a death, but they'll never see our demise. Burning life, burning life. Who's the one? I'm the one, he's the one, and you're the one, and we're the ones. We're the ones who keep the fire going till the day we die, till they see the light, make it bright, till we hear the people say, Like Mary poured out her perfume on Jesus' feet, I must pour out. All right, so let's get into today's word study. And every Monday, we do have the Sunday message word study. A lot of people looking forward to this too, uh, as word studies are the favorites for everyone. Uh, this week's Sunday message is Be thankful God takes action with the one who knows. There's like five or six Bible verses. Uh, you guys can go ahead and read those over and over again. And Sunday said uh, at the end of the message, Don't just listen to this once, go over and read this message over and over and over again, right? So the first message we're looking at is be thankful. And I think this is a great, this is something that we always constantly have to be reminded of, right? And we need to be reminded of it because it's the one thing that should be the biggest thing that comes out of our mouths. When Sunseem said, when he prays, do you know what percentage of his prayer is thanksgiving? Sunseem says that 70% of his prayer is thanksgiving. Seven out of 10 things that Sunstein prays about is thanksgiving. So much to be thankful for. Like when I was, when I was listening to this, it's like, wow. The first thought I had, uh, like when I was thinking about like this podcast too, I was like, wow, God, I am so thankful, right? That you inspired. And I, I even said, God, it wasn't even me. You started the podcast. I am so thankful you started it right? I'm so thankful you've given me this equipment that I have right now. I'm so, th like, so many things came to mind. I'm like, oh, I am so thankful. I really, really am. So when I looked at this, I was like, yeah, there's so many things to be thankful for. And I love that first part of the message is whenever you receive help, right? You always got to be thankful to the one helping you. And that's truth. If anyone helps you, anyone gives you, you got to be so thankful. And when you look, think about God, He's like, if God has saved you once from death, then you have to be thankful for your entire lifetime. 
Why? Because if you died, you couldn't, you wouldn't be here anymore. Which means from that moment on, when you've been saved from death, you should always be thankful from that point going forward. Right? From that point going forward. And, you know, this, this is one of those big things where Sunstein said this in the past too is, it's when we are not thankful is when we move towards death. And it actually reminds me of what Sunstein said in the past is, the reason why Sunstein is able to overcome his difficulties because he's thankful. Thankfulness gives you strength. Thankfulness allows you to overcome your difficulties. Thankfulness is what allows you to defeat Satan, right? And when you're that thankful all the time, it means you value which means that when you stop valuing what God has given, what happens? This is when people go to the domain of death, when they start losing salvation. And that's why this is probably something I'll talk about even more tomorrow is calculate what God has done for you in the past. And he's like literally said, I want you to think about them one by one. God has given something to each and every one of us. Look at those things. Rejoice. Be thankful. Receive strength. Live fervently. And the one thing that's kind of scary is when some people said, or become like churches that turn for the worse in Providence. I'm like, wow. So there were churches that actually turned out like this. When he said, become like churches that turned for the worse in Providence. It means that it's happening. Churches turn for the worse when they stop being thankful. Churches turn for the worse when they forget what God has done for them. Like, think about that. We've received so many, like over a hundred church buildings in Providence. How thankful do we have to be? How well do we have to use it? Because even when Sussex was talking about the ambition masterpiece in Wuming Dong, like that is symbolic, right? That is the God's temple and we're all living in God's temple. So, you know, all the places that we're at, we have to be that much more thankful. Like, you know, today I'm going to be playing volleyball at, uh, at CMC, which is a large church, like a bot church, huge, the biggest church in Malaysia. Man, how thankful we have to be to have our own church, to have a gym in the church, to play volleyball, badminton, soccer, whenever we want. It's incredible. God has given it to each and every one of you personally. Right? Now, uh, another another part that I, I really liked was when Sunsim talked about uh, taking action wholeheartedly. Don't just take action. Take action with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then what's the point? He says, if you take action with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, right? What's going to happen is then you will know what God has done for you. I was like, ooh, that's interesting. If I take action with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, then I know what God has done for me. Well, what happens if you take action? You gain. And when you gain, you start suffering less. You come out of the world of suffering. So how do I stop suffering, right? Well, one of the big things is, uh, the message talks about if you suffer and nothing comes about, there's no blessing, there's nothing you gain from it, then your suffering is meaningless. It's just suffering itself. But if you actually gain something, fulfill it, and you suffer, what happens? It's worth it. And I think that's what it is. Like, take action with all your heart. You know, if you take action with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you're suffering when you're taking action that much. However, when you actually get it, what happens? You, you don't suffer anymore. Right? You don't suffer. I think one thing that, that Sun Tzu's telling us is like, hey, he said, read the Proverbs and take action. Right? Read the Proverbs and take action. If you read the Proverbs and take action on those Proverbs, you'll overcome Satan. You'll overcome evil. You'll receive blessings. And it, it was kind of just something saying straight up. He's just saying, saying to us in an indirect way, value my Proverbs. Value my Proverbs. Be thankful for the Proverbs you get every day. You don't know how big they are. They may not affect you today. Some of these Proverbs won't even be like really, really fulfilled until like maybe like 50, 100 years later. But he's like, be thankful because you already have the answer right now. And sometimes he's like, you know what's inside those Proverbs? Prophecies. Special revelations. And then he drops you know, a bigger bomb and he's like, and guess what? This entire sermon I'm giving to you right now is basically a sermon in the form. It's Proverbs in the sermon of a form. Uh, uh, Proverbs in this 
in the form of a sermon. I was like, well, if we value the word, then we should value Proverbs because the Proverbs, the word comes from the Proverbs. So I looked at that. I was like, yeah, this, this, you know, it was really, really great message. Uh, one, another part, remember that first video about it shows God's land and the land outside. And it's like the owner takes care of his land, but not the land outside of the fence, right? So God is protecting what belongs to him, which means we must belong to God. If you really, really want to be protected, be in God's garden, be protected by God by belonging to him, right? The moment you belong to someone else, then God lets it be. So if we want to be in God's garden, if we want to be those that are in God's, uh, to, to belong to God, we must become the body of God, right? Because the body of the body, if to become the body of the Holy Trinity is to become the body of the owners themselves, right? So I looked at that and I was like, I was like yeah, that's, that's super powerful. Uh, another point I liked, it came from the second one, second video, I think it might have. It was uh, it was about the true shepherd. You guys remember that about the true shepherd? And I, I guess it's playing off of being inside the fence of God, and then there's the outside defense that belongs to Satan. And it was more of uh, if there is no true shepherd, then what happens is we're eaten by predators, which means that we cannot be taken care of by the true shepherd if we are not inside the fence, if we're not in, if we do not belong to God. And like the greatest examples we see was people from 2023 fell astray, went on the path of old. They and it just ended. He's like, if you don't have the true shepherd, you're eaten by predators. And you know that one thing that was really sh uh, shocking is when the message said, "Your spirit, your spirit can fall astray because." of something insignificant and will die. And I was like, is that really true? But then I, I, I looked at it completely as last year, people just hear a rumor. They don't even know it's true and they fall over and die. They fall astray. They're getting it from someone who is not the true shepherd. And because they're hearing those things, those small insignificant things, they fall astray because of those small things and they just die. But it's only the one that God sent that can defeat Satan. And that's why we have to listen to him. Everything we've gotten right now until this point. I was teaching a newcomer over the weekend. And uh, this person knows the, you know, this person's wife is in uh, Providence. And uh, he's learning the Bible study right now. And like one of the things that I was, I was teaching, it was, it was like, the question came up is like, so is this Sunseem's mission? And I was like, well, there's only one way to know. And he and answered like, well, what, well, how? What's the one way to know? I was like, it's through the word. And when you hear the word, the words of life, the words of the new time period, things that you've never heard before, it's either going to move you one step more towards believing in this mission or one step away from believing in it. And after I finished teaching Jesus and John the Baptist, he straight up said, no, 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 this brings me closer to understanding. And now he's like, I can't wait to hear the final lessons, right? To really solidify it, right? So even then, it's like, yeah, we once we realize it's done, we should already have, this is the man of mission and I absolutely believe, which means from that point on, who am I listening to, right? I have to listen to the true shepherd because everyone else is going to be trying to take me away right, from the true shepherd. The moment we fight alone in the tribulation, in the difficulty, this is when we lose, right? It's when we are, you know, it's kind of like one of these natural things that Satan wants us to do is all of a sudden we hear this rumor about Sunseem and the first thing we do is we try to go alone on it. Well, let me try to figure this out. And this is when we lose. But we hear it so many times, right? It's the Lord who overcame. It's the Lord that defeated the world, right? Jesus overcame. And if we truly believe in Jesus and we truly believe Jesus came back in spirit, is working through the man mission of this time period, that's it. It's done. It's done from that point. So one thing that I, I, I thought was very telling also was when Sunsi was like, look at the people that left and look at them as a mirror. That is, that can possibly, that's a self-reflection point. 
that there are people that that realize this history, believed in this history, believe in the one that God sent, and then they got lost in the tribulation because they took their eyes off the head. They took their eyes off the Lord. They were no longer one. They did it alone, and Satan grabbed them. There was no true shepherd around them, and this is why the predator came and ate them up. But we have to be those that do not stop looking to the one that God sent, looking at Jesus, looking at the Holy Trinity, taking action every day, and this is when we're not going to be lost in the tribulation. We got to get to that point. Right? This is why the man of mission is that valuable, is that huge. How big is a man of mission? Let me give the example of Jesus. What did Jesus do? He died on the cross. And what did he do? He opened the door of salvation. And what's even more incredible is that even after he died, he continued to make history even in his spirit. That's how big this person is, is that even if he dies, he's still working. He's still running. This path of history, thousand years, it's been opened. History is moving. It's pushing forward. People are going to come, right? We have to understand this really, really deeply, right? One thing is like whether tribulations come or not, whether you go through injustice, and here's something talking about his own situation, you still got to do it. Even in his youth, he still did what he needed to do, even though he suffered, even though he's hungry, even though he's cold. You got to keep doing it. In the future, we're going to have the hundreds of thousands come. Millions will come. And providence is not going to be like it is today. We have to think about the future. You got to think about the future. And one thing that Sun Seem said about Wormingdong, he says, Wormingdong was completed in the right time. And if you didn't make it at that time, we would have lived in suffering. So he got it done. It got completed in time. And I think, look at us right now. What's happening at the right time? What's happening in time? What's happening in the right time? It's about us making ourselves, completing our mission, our responsibilities. And if we use what God has given us, not just the physical things like the finances, like our houses, our churches, everything else, but think about your spiritual gifts that God has given you. Use those gifts. Use those gifts that you have been given, whether it's about management, hospitality, leadership, uh, preaching, lecturing, whatever it is, use it even more valuably. And then God will allow us to use it even more valuably than we are right now. And that, that's even reminding me of like, I almost, I was feeling so guilty at a certain point. Like, oh man, I should be lecturing even more. And I, and I should, I think I do need to lecture more. However, I can't waste it. And this is why I'm doing YouTube. I don't want to waste it. Gotta, gotta preach. If, even if it's on YouTube, put up one lecture, you're going to have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. They're going to watch it over the next 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 years. So I hope it's something that all of us will really be able to understand the time we're living in. We only have a short amount of time that we're able to work at our peak, right? Only a short time. Remember when that, there was that, what video was it? The third or fourth video where it's about uh, the Ambition Masterpiece. They didn't have any rocks. And then, you know, Sunseem was given the Ambition Masterpiece rock. It's just a single rock. And Sunseem had no idea what it was. But it was something God gave. It didn't have any shape and he just used it. And then 27 years later, they're like maintaining it, getting rid of the bushes and flowers, whatever, and put new flowers in there. They got rid of a beehive. And then from the sports field, Sunsim looks as like, whoa, that's an eagle's head. And then he said, whoa, no. I realize now, why it's called the Ambition Masterpiece Rock. It symbolized God, but it took him 27 years. It didn't end when you just made it. It didn't end when you first got the rock. Even though the rock still stands there as it is today, as it was before, you just trim stuff around and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, this is what it is. And you realize at another level. And I'm saying that all of us here too, guys, 
Don't stop what you're doing. Don't stop your missions. Don't stop using your talents because it might be a lull. Think about it. 27 years where it just stood there as the Ambition Masterpiece Rock. And then 27 years later, something clicks and the next level is reached. And that's going to happen to us too. Even though we may feel like, oh, is this really enough? Is it like, are we really getting um, like... Am I really contributing to the church? Am I really doing this? Am I really doing that? And you might be thinking to yourself, you're not doing much. But what I'm telling you is you are doing. You are doing it. And it's something that we have to recognize is we may not see any difference or a different level uh, being raised until years later, until we make it that much better. It's all down to how much do you value what God has given you? How much do you value the skill God has given you? Right? Because the message said, you treat it valuably, use it valuably. Then the Holy Trinity will allow you to realize more value, discover more valuable things. And it's not just with the the gifts that we received, it's how we treat the Holy Trinity and the man of mission. And this is when we're helped more, this is when we're blessed more. Oh, there's so much in this message. I can't go over every single part, there's just so much in it. Right? The history of grace and the Holy Spirit is going to take place. It's going to take place. Everything we see, everything that we see now that may not look that valuable or great, just wait a little bit longer. Value everything God has given you. From my laptop that I'm using, from my microphone to my earphones, right? Just like even right now, right in front of my face, I have a cup of... um, uh, a good friend over here in Malaysia send this to me magnesium and muscle support magnesium tablets right high strength for muscle support because you know I kept talking about oh I play bas- I play volleyball and then I'm, I'm gone for the next three days whatever and like yeah yeah t- they gave me these tablets perfect it's exactly what I needed exactly what I needed right gotta value it how do I value it I eat it every night I'm basically almost done this this tube is basically almost done right I hope all of us too value everything, including the health of your life also, right? That's one of the reasons why I like this intermittent fasting because it's healthy for my brain. The losing weight part, ah, it's not a big deal to me. That's not something that I'm really caring about, but I really care about the functioning of my brain, right? So let's really be thankful, guys. Be thankful by valuing. Be thankful by doing. Be thankful, you know, there's so many different, don't be thankful just one time. Don't be thankful because the atmosphere is telling us. What does that mean? It kind of reminds me of uh, giving glory to God for 15 days. We're giving glory to God because we're celebrating. But don't give glory to God only in the 15 days. Give glory to God at all times. Don't follow Don't follow just the atmosphere. Don't be thankful just because this week we're doing it. No, it seems like I'm thankful every day. Every single day I'm thankful. And how do I know how thankful Sunseam is? Guys, how many times have you heard Sunseam's sermon when he receives a rock and then we hear about the same story over and over again for the next three months? Don't you guys remember that? He's, he's like so into trees and we just start, he's just talking about trees for like five months straight. We're like, oh man, I know the story, right? But he's that thankful. He's that thankful. This is something that's pretty powerful. If you keep complaining, it becomes slander. Right? Complaints become slander. That's why be thankful. Be thankful. Uh, Two big questions with answers, right? First question was, why don't we receive bigger things, right? And that's something that we want. Wait, why don't I win the lottery? How come I only won $100? How come I can't win $1,000, right? Or whatever, I want a bigger house. I don't know what it is. The things that we're asking for. Well, number one is you didn't value what's already been given to you. Or you look at those things, just ordinary. Nothing major, nothing big. That's why you don't receive bigger things. Second one is even more powerful. It's just you lost your first love. And losing your first love is the result of not valuing continuously until the end. And eventually, if you, if you never find that first love, you're going to be forsaken, right? We got to be deeply in love. And it's kind of like one of those things I talked about last week in the Wednesday message. You have to deliberately 
right? You have to work on your love. That's a powerful statement. Work on your love. Don't just work hard. Don't just work hard on anything. Work hard. Work on that love between you and God. So those are two answers for why don't we receive bigger things. Second question is pretty powerful too. How to receive more blessings? Well, number one, one, same thing. Value everything that God has given you. Value it. Use it. Use it until there's nothing left. But number two is be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Oof. This message is heavy. Well, not heavy as in like deep, like, like, you know, like, oh my gosh, it's really like, oh, it's about judgment and stuff. It's more heavy as in like, wow. There's so deep, so many deep things in here. It weighs on your heart, right? It really does. Hey, well, did you find it interesting about people that are trying to design things like Wormindong on their own? I, I found, I, I didn't even know about that. About that person almost died trying to build it and the government told him to rebuild it again. Like, no, put it back to where it originally was. Which means, you know, basically straight up, only the one cent can take action according to that design. Right? I had no idea that people said they're going to build these things on their own. I'm not sure why they'd want to do that. It makes no sense to me. Because if they think it's wrong, if they think providence is wrong and they leave, why would you want to make something that's exact, that's like the symbol of providence on your own? Like, why would you want to make it? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Right? Oh, I'm leaving providence and I'm going to build my own warming dome. I'm like, what? That makes no sense to me. If you really think it's wrong and you shouldn't build it, build something else. Build something that, that's, that's more towards you. Right? Or what you think is right. And this might be KJS. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know who this is talking about. There's someone who says they will make a new doctrine with their followers. It sounds like KJS. I, I don't know that. I, to be honest, I, I don't even know if that's really her. But these are, all, these are all actions that are leading towards death. And I think the most important death, which means the domain of death in the spirit. If, if people are leading people like this, they're leading their followers to death, if you think about that. There, you know, this one is a little bit interesting. Like, Sun Tzu's giving us all these hints. He's talking about the North and South. He's talking about Korea being united. When you think about that, like, oh, can it ever be united? But it's very interesting. He said, for the North and South to be united, they first must unite in faith with God. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but that was actually the original plan. The John the Baptist was from North Korea. And then Sun Seems from South Korea, they would band together, they would come together, unite as one, and there would have been one country. That was supposed to be one of the original plans. Gotta come together through the one that is sent. Gotta come together through faith. And then what Sun Seems said is if time passes, the situation is gonna turn back to being hostile. And people are gonna suffer. That's scary. And this is talking about like real life right now things. Also, it's like God is always on the side of Abel. Amen. Right? Cain's always going to pay for the, receive the price of their sins. Whew. Yeah, there, there was so much in this message. Like, uh, it, was, it wasn't a long message either. Was it, was it long for you guys? It didn't feel long at all for me. Uh, it felt... It wasn't a long message. After I look at the clock, I was like, oh, it was pretty short. But, no, was it short? I think it was like a little over an hour, hour and 10 minutes. Was it something along that line? But it was so meaty. There's just so much in the message itself. Uh, like talking about how valuable the person, the man of mission is. If you don't interpret perfectly, you cannot take action perfectly. And then you cannot fulfill God's word, God's will perfectly. Right? And that's why only the person that interprets it perfectly, which at the time of Jesus, think about it, he appeared even after death in spirit, 2,000 years, only in spirit but making history. Because if you think about it, if you don't know everything, if you don't interpret perfectly, then how can God fulfill the will through you if you don't know the will perfectly? Right? One stroke missing, one dot, one T that's not crossed. It means the word can't be conveyed perfectly. 
What are the two most powerful words we have? Well, it came out in the message, the resurrection and Advent. Those two are huge. And it's about Jesus' spirit dying and resurrecting and the return of Jesus' spirit. Like those are the two big ones is the resurrection and Advent. So here it is. You know, the, the New Testament, you know, they're all waiting. They're still waiting. Whew, so much. Hey, what oh, what'd you guys think about that star and the nuclear fusion example he gave? I was lost until he told me the answer. When he said, you understand? I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, stars are made from nuclear fusion. There's winds like a typhoon blowing around this, 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 and this. And then in the end, when the star is made, only the core is left. I'm like, okay. And when the and when everything finishes, guess what? The winds disappear. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, do you realize? I'm like, no okay i'm like what are you talking about and then straight up he's like when history first began in the 70s many religious branches already started right and these are all subsidiary branches subsidiary work that god is using to make the core history and once providence gathered and the core was completed all the other branches disappeared and i was like wow that was the craziest parable I was just sitting there like, what is he talking about? Nuclear fusion. And then winds like, I was like, what is it? It was the, uh, for me, it was just incredible. Incredible example. Incredible. Yeah, I, I was like so stuck on like, I'm like going, I take pride in myself making good parables. But when I heard that one, I was blown away. I was like, whoa, okay, that's. That's so far beyond that I could ever think about that. I, I couldn't even think about that. Right? And uh, this, the, the, the last thing that he's talking about, he, started, he had a conversation with God, right? The conversations, what was the conversations about? The conversation is about um, what God does through him is the will, right? But if someone is connected to Sansanim, is there a will in what they are doing? Right? Like that's that's it's a pretty it's a, it's a really deep question. If something's the will, then things of other people pertaining to it is the will also? And it's like, yeah, it's the pair. It's a pair. God has taken action together for that will. And it kind of talks about that nuclear fusion thing with the stars too, that all the different branches are subsidiaries to make the core. Right? But in the end, only the core is left. Only the will that Sun Team is making is going to be the thing that's left. People are going to be helping here and there, right? There is a will for both the subject and the counterpart. And the most important part is both sides have to have the same heart, right? There has to be a will and both sides have to have the same heart. Then there's the will, right? Both sides receive the same revelation. But if they're taught differently, then it's not the will. Right, I, I would like to know why he asked this question. Like in what situation? Whom? What was happening that made Sun Seem say, oh, I wonder if this is the will. You know what I mean? Like there's got to be something that happened where Sun Seem's like, oh, I don't, I don't understand this. Please help me to understand this more because this just happened. And I, is that really part of the will too? So that was something interesting. I was like, I would love to know what actually happened for him to think that. And then the second one he talked about is worries, right? And this is something that I think all of us were like, yeah, this is reality, right? And Sun seems like, yeah, when you don't have money, don't just tell me not to worry. Like Sun seems like, yeah, God, um, if you if we have no money and then you tell us not to worry, you're going to give us money? Because if you don't give us money, then there's no other use because it's just psychological comfort. And God straight up says, I will take full responsibility for not only the mountain that's blocking your way, but everything. And then God puts in, you know, everyone keeps asking me to get rid of the mountain. But sometimes you just need to go around. And it's like, boom. <laughs> it's just your responsibility. Go around it. You don't, have, you don't have to go through it. You don't have to remove the mountain. God speaks perfectly and God gives the answer. Oh, what's the key point of the message? Only those that use it valuably think about it. Give thanks to the Holy Trinity in Jesus. 
And for Sun Sim, when he says, like, this key point is when I use it, I think about more ways to utilize it more valuably, right? And Jesus said to Sun Sim, it will be done according to your faith, so use it diligently. And it's going to be the same in any time period. Those being saved, ugh, the biggest, the biggest problem, like, you know, because people aren't thankful and they don't value it, it's the people inside the time period that are the biggest problem because they're the ones betraying and leaving. Poof. So I hope everyone, let's always take action. Let's always value as much as we can. All right. Very, very powerful message. Hope it's something that uh, really moved and inspired you guys too. Okay. So there it is, guys. That is the Sunday message word study. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Uh, let's Before we get into the video segment of Eddie, uh, let's get into uh, the second break of the day.
Okay, so here we go, getting into the final segment for today's Monday podcast. And uh, it's going to be another video podcast by Eddie Kwan over there in Korea right now. I believe he's in Busan at the moment. Uh, and he's just piecing together some footage from the week that he just, uh, the, you know, the week that he just went through. And uh, I hope that you guys are going to enjoy this. This is Eddie Kwan with 2G Talks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another week's episode of 2G Talks. Uh, I know it's quite different, you know, being able to see uh, faces and uh, video. Um, in the last few weeks, we've been sending footage from Wormyeongdong and from Korea, and uh, the response has been really amazing. So I'm really grateful that people have uh, been really thankful and appreciative and wanted to see those things. And, you know, <laughs> I'm sure Pastor Sky already knows, and you guys all know of Pastor Sky already, too. Uh, he himself wants to provide that kind of content to each and every one of the listeners on the MSC 117.8. Uh, but, you know, as we were talking about these things, uh, you know, it's going from audio to including video. It, it really requires a lot more work, right? So I think it's been something that we've been kind of putting off. And <laughs> I, I'm, I, I apologize to Pass the Sky for uh, causing something like this so that, you know, maybe going forward, we really have to uh really raise the level and include video in all of our footage um today uh this last week uh there were like a lot of amazing stories and so i want to share some of the footage related to that too uh, but you know as it's like really our first time transitioning over into doing something like this uh, I'm, I wasn't even sure how to uh, edit the the footage in a way that would really tie together uh, so I just wanted to provide some uh, additional explanations uh, so this last week our family here um, my cousins and my aunt and my uh, uncle and I were supposed to go to uh, Jeju Island Right. For uh, those of you who don't know who why, where Jeju Island is, it's an island off the coast of Korea, like between Korea and Japan. And it's a really beautiful place. Right. And like uh, it's considered one of the, the natural wonders of, of the world. And uh, we were excited to go. Uh, but the day before that we went, um, they said that the winds here uh, in Busan uh, were too strong. And so the planes aren't able to take off the day, the next day. Right? And so it was really a big deal, especially for our, our family here, because it's really not easy to take time off of work in Korea. So, you know, when you have your set days, you can't really, you know, move them around. Right. And so uh, my aunt's family is really busy, too. And they've been doing so much just to take care of me as well. And so it really wasn't easy to try to... Uh, adjust and change right so we were like really uh kind of desperate for that day trying to see if there's another way to go to jeju or something like that uh, but the entire time we did feel and this entire trip we felt like just like with the footage from morning last week and uh, the previous week too that really god's in charge of everything and he's in charge of the schedule and so things will work out really well right if it's god's will for us to go to jeju we'll go to jeju if it's not then we won't and so at night uh, we came up with some alternate plans because when we thought about it, we're like, okay, we still don't want to waste this opportunity, right? And like for uh, my uncle and aunt to both be free and my older cousin to be free too, it's not really a commonplace occurrence. Uh, and so we're like, okay, let's not waste this time and let's go somewhere, even if it's just for a day or two, right? For one night. Um, and so we were brainstorming a bunch of places. There's Gwangju, right? This very beautiful place and, and all of these different options. But twice we played this like ladder game you know like where you put the end result of where you're going to go at the end of a ladder uh and we played it once and we ended up in this place called namhe right but then <laughs> the first time they weren't satisfied with the with you know how it went about so we played it again but the second time too we got namhe again and then so we went to namhe and at first when i was going i, I didn't know where namhe was i don't really know uh what it was about but it, it was really this it's this uh, island um it, this one's like attached to korea most uh you know a lot more than jeju island is and so it's a little bit south it's southwest of, of where we are in busan um and it turns out that this is a place where something has sang uh, many story uh many songs many of the 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 myung songs and um he stayed here in 2019 if you guys remember there was a time where he went somewhere like went to this it looks like a coastal area, but it is an island uh, where he to celebrate his birthday, right, in 2019. And he also went a time before. And so while we were there, we heard these amazing, amazing uh, stories and, and um, 
like the you know the stories behind the great song right of the things that he did there and it was so moving because that wasn't part of our plan at all like actually when we went there uh, we got there and we knew that this was a place that he sang and so my cousins uh like first took us to the place where something he sang uh like by the by the, the the water by the beach right but when we went there you know because you know none of them were there at the time exactly they didn't know exactly where it was and they were like it was around here somewhere like we know that something he's saying here we don't know exactly where uh and then so we went to you know our accommodations and we were planning out our day but, you know, we were looking at all of these different places. Namhe is a, a place where it's, it's famous for its a German village uh, because it was a place where um, Korean um, citizens who went to Germany um, back in the 60s, uh, uh, af you know, after the Korean War, uh, Korea was so poor that the president at the time, he sent uh, nurses and, and like other kind of skilled laborers uh, to Germany to make money for the country, to elevate the country's uh, financial situation. Uh, and then so, like, I think in the 60s, like, um, and in 1978, uh, right, like, with for the beginning of history, uh, they pulled out of Germany completely. And then the last person of that program, uh, you know, came to Korea, right? But Korea is, like, very different from Germany, right? And I'm sure at that time that there, there were kids born and families formed uh, while in Germany. So Korea made this German village so that those who, you know, wants to, to retain that, um, that German lifestyle and, and that feeling could, uh, you know, stay there. So we had all of these different plans and we were going to go to... Um, to to germantown like to the the village and and, and whatnot uh but while we were making the plan my uncle called one of his friends um and you know to ask like if someone knows where the exact location is and amazingly the uh, head leader of the the namhe church was giving a tour to uh, some male uh, face stars from uh, another region just the day before and it turns out that they were at a cafe uh, hanging out like uh, just like down the street from where we were uh, and then so we quickly were able to contact him and that he so graciously, uh, you know, said that he would show us, you know, where the location was. And so we had no idea. We still had no idea at the time what it was going to be like. But from that moment on, we went out and we were out the whole day, right, together with this pastor. And he showed us a place after place of all the places where uh, something like, um, like saying the great songs, all the stories behind it, right? Like uh, this, uh, he he, this person is someone who really wanted to take after the Lord and like do things as, uh, you know, as uh, Jesus did through something him, right? And so uh, he wanted to find like image rocks too. So he located all of these image rocks and he knew exactly where, you know, as soon as we sat to sing a song and, and how to get there and the stories behind it and the stories behind Namhe too, right? So there's a particular thing. Um, I'll wrap up the, the introduction. So I'll introduce like two clips. So I think the first one is kind of obvious. It's like the place where something sang. And then the second thing on this footage is a place where something stayed. And I kind of go over this part, but, you know, it's, it's this incredible view, too. And maybe going forward, I'll be able to share these stories to you guys in, in greater detail. Um, but after we after we go to the place where something's saying, um, there's a place where uh, it's, a, it's a small store and it's open 365 days a year. And so when something came here, it was at the end of January of 2019. So he went there and he bought, uh, you know, a, a, a calligraphy brush, right? And it was a, quite a thick one, right? And so I didn't really know the thickness of the ones that something he used, but it makes sense, right? Because he draws these large calligraphy paintings and such. So he bought this large brush, uh, which he kind of like trimmed and he made clean and then he used to, to uh, paint um and while he was in Namhe so we went to that store it's just a little store and I bought some you know souvenirs for people to take back home but the craziest part of the story and the thing that you know you guys really need to see so check this part of the video out is you know the map right and the layout of Namhe right so you know uh, we said that this pastor likes to find image rocks but you know one of the greatest image rocks we found was you know etched into Namhe from the very beginning right like into the island itself right that being the image rock itself and so you guys can you know in the comments below 
say what you see. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. This one is so shocking. It's so clear what the image is. And so I really hope that you guys are moved. I wish I could tell you all the stories, but you know, when we recorded everything that the pastor was explaining, like, gosh, we were together. Like we said, we, we, we maybe thought like, okay, maybe he'll just show us that one location and then maybe we can have lunch with him and then we'll head out. But we went to, uh, to the beach. We went to the place of something we stayed. We went to the Namia church. We went to that store. And then so we actually, we did eat together, but we didn't eat together till 9 p.m. And so to the Namia pastor, uh, the head leader, we're so very grateful. And actually, past this guy, he told you to come visit because he, he knows you too, right? And so I said, I'll, I'll make sure to, to tell this guy to, to come visit. But Namia is pretty cold right now too. So maybe that's not uh, past this guy's cup of tea. But anyways, guys, this is just the introduction. And so following this, like we'll go into the footage from uh, Namahe. I hope you guys really enjoy. So I, I found the map. Uh, I, you know, it's in the video too, but I wanted to show you guys in person. Look at this. What does this image remind you of in this corner here? This other side has an image too, but this one is so crazy. There's gonna be a better. Uh, there's gonna be better footage in the video itself, but this entire island is in the shape of uh, you know something while he was praying, right? That you can see in the in the Book of Salvation and in the, in the other places, right? With this image. But anyways, okay. I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> 이 친구가 계속 지금 하나님이 <웃음> 스케줄을 잡아주시는 거예요. <웃음> 네. 이제야 지금 네. 네. 데이트 회사로 지금 뛰고 있어요. 아 진짜? <웃음> This is a place where something stayed in Namte. We exercise here, played, uh, sang two songs here back in 2019. Mm. All of these other places have been remodeled, but only this one villa that something used is still intact. <laughs> From the sun to the, 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 the moon to the sun to the earth. So then he came to this shop and he got one of these brushes and cut it and used it to draw and using these papers here.
And that's a big thank you to Eddie. And once again, we are so thankful for the videos that you keep sending. Uh, I hope that you continue to do this. And yes, it is inspiring me. I got to start doing this too. All right. So there it is, guys. That is today's, uh, today's Monday podcast. Hope you guys super enjoyed it. Enjoy your Monday. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive on 17.8. You saw me up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like Zone, you know, I'm on the morning star drive, you know.